Hi everyone, I'm John Lin, the founder and chief editor at Healthcare IT Today. We're excited to bring you another in our series of interviews with top leaders in health IT. And today's guests are Vince Lopez, he's founder and CEO at Parker Health, and Leif Bigler, he's general manager at FTV Vila. Welcome guys. Hey, thanks for having us, John. Yeah. yeah, excited for this discussion. Before we dive in, uh, Vince, you want to start us off? Tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, Parker Health. Sure, absolutely. So I'm, I'm Vince Lopez, our, the founder and CEO of Parker Health, uh, really leaving to develop the most advanced and most compliant system, a health management system on the market today uh, by enabling a one-stop shop for a one-stop solution for our patients and providers and payers, et cetera, and really unifying the most interoperable solution on the market. Uh, there's one fun things about myself. I'm a big golfer, enjoy uh, traveling and playing a lot of golf as much as I can <laughs> uh, when I'm not working. <laughs> Let me know when you're in Vegas and we'll go. <laughs> uh, Leith, you want to go next? Yeah. Hey, John, thanks for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today and uh, speak with you guys. Uh, my name is Leith Bigler. Um, I'm vice president of clinical network services at FDB, and I'm also general manager of uh, FDB Vila, our new e-prescribing platform. So uh, very much excited to be here and to talk more, more about it. Um, I've been in the industry for about 20, almost 25 years now. Been mostly focused on network related services and healthcare. I've been with FDB for about three years. Um, they brought me in to help them establish and build a brand new platform to uh, innovate and bring choice and options in uh, the e prescribing uh, market. So it's great to, great to be a part of this and to be here with Vince. Yeah, so let's dive into that, Lay. Uh, what went into that decision to launch an e prescribing network? Well, you know, FDB has been around for many years. Um, we're a market leader um, in the drug content part of the, of the market. Um, we've, uh, <clears throat> we have a majority of non-federal hospitals that are, leverage our, our, our clinical decision support services. Um, we have a large share of the MDs um, throughout the, the country using various systems. Uh, we work with pharmacies, hospitals, uh, EHRs, PBMs, you name it. And as we began to speak more with these customers on how we can bring more value to them, uh, there were several of them that actually brought up the topic of FDB becoming not just the, the creator of the content, but also the driver of moving information back and forth through network services like you prescribing. So really our, our idea behind Vila was to uh, meet our customers' needs. Yeah, and Vince, you know, you chose to use FDB Vila for e-prescribing. Talk talk about that process and why you chose to use them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think you know, Leith and I have been talking for a while now, and, and with with their team, really the innovation approach that they take and what they're doing in their product, right? Delivering quality and delivering something that is going to actually make an outcome uh, in a patient's experience, and that's one of the mission focuses we have here as an organization at Parker Health is all about the patient, right? And what does that journey look like? Uh, and, and working with FDB, they brought that experience, they brought that knowledge and really emphasized uh, what we were mission focused on. And it, I just think that was the most fundamental basis of what our relationship began on. And then once we dove into the technology that we were both bringing to the table, it just made total sense to continue moving forward. Yeah, so Vince, talk about some of those things that kind of set the Vila product, the e-prescribing network apart from, from the other option out there. Yeah, I think a lot of this, you know, we can go into the competitive advantages or one way or the other, but really the overall aspect of it is about how data is moving and data is shared. Uh, and one thing about the relationship is that we're really important, again, as I mentioned, on the patient experience. Uh, one thing that we do is we share data back and forth. We're really making sure patients are getting access to the quality medication that they deserve, right? They're getting access to the proper pharmagenomics. They're getting access to the proper doctors and care. And that's really a, a tangible relationship that we have to share in totality here as we continue to grow an organization on both of our focuses as we bring that, again, patient focus and also really learning about where their technology enables us to manage care better, right? Mm. Making sure we're bringing in the right physicians, making sure we're making the right decisions uh, and leveraging that on top of what Parker's being and developing and has developed over the last three years uh, to really bring healthcare as interoperable as possible. Yeah, Leith, is that how you see it? It's going beyond just delivering the prescription to the right place. Is that how you look at it or what, you know, what sets you apart? Yeah, I, I, I do. I agree with Vincent. Um, <clears throat> I, I think, as we all know, e-prescribing has been around for a while. Um, yeah. The adoption rate has increased dramatically. And 
you always give credit where credit is due in terms of getting the usage um, on an electronic a platform and system. Um, however, e-prescribing fundamentally in the last 20 years hasn't changed much. And so our focus is really around driving innovation. Um, it's, it's making, it's creating affordability for those participants that are involved in, in the e-prescribing process. It's innovating. So as Vincent just mentioned, we can actually provide more content, more data and share it with more endpoints. And by leveraging a platform, a cloud-based platform like Vila, um, we're able to move quicker. We can expand, you know, faster. We're, we're very scalable. Um, we, as Vince knows, we go through a very fast and painless implementation process with our partners um, on, on any side, whether that you'd be a PBM, an EHR, a pharmacy. And uh, we just love working with innovative uh, systems, very, very much like Vince and what they're doing. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. I mean, the mandate obviously pushed e-prescribing and, and it accomplished a lot, but we, there was essentially a monopoly on, on most of the e-prescribing network. So it's interesting to have you come in and, you know, and when you're a monopoly, you don't have to innovate. So I, you know, I wonder, you know, that that may be at play here, you know, from what I've seen, because you're right, it hasn't changed. I mean, we've seen some innovations, I think, controlled substances a bit, right, which were slower in adoption, and we needed some more authentication, identity management things. But beyond that, uh, I think you're right, we haven't seen that much, you know, adoption. So yeah, yeah an innovation, I would say. So lay the, I mean, talk about what it takes to integrate into your product. You know, you're cloud hosted, you deliver it all via API. How deeply can you integrate uh, Vila into a, a product like Partner Health? Yeah, great question. So, you know, we're really focused on number one, the standard. Um, we meet, um, we speak against PDP, we meet the latest standards of that. We support every message type that is offered through NCPDP. And I think that alone is unique because there are, there have been a lot of efforts by NCPDP and by, by several organizations um, in the industry to innovate, but they're not leveraging a lot of those transactions. Um, RxPhil is a great example. You know, there is a transaction that exists out there that, that, that allows a pharmacy to fill a script and immediately notify the provider that that patient received that prescription, uh, but, but it's underutilized. It's not being leveraged. And so, um, and, and a lot of the reason that that's not being utilized as an example is because of pricing um, and to, to us, that's not a good excuse uh, to not to use that. So, you know, we're offering those types of services at no cost because we simply know it's the right thing to do. Um, from in, from you, you mentioned APIs. We, uh, we offer API connectivity to our network. Again, we follow the standards. Um, and we're really focused on um, specialty areas where specialty prescriptions, um, which are making up for a, a lot of the growth in, in, um, in the drug segment of healthcare right now. And we realize that it's a very painful process. You know, right now, I think on average that, you know, I read that the, the average of specialty script takes, you know, between 15 to 24 days to get filled um, just because of all the red tape involved. And we believe that by leveraging, you know, innovation, technology, uh, cloud-based solutions, that we can cut that down to much less than, than what the, the industry is seeing right now. Yeah. yeah. You're right about that. Uh, I just saw Jen Horanjeff, uh, CEO of Savvy Co-op, multiple days in a row, hours waiting on the phone for a specialty prescription that she's had since she was a child <laughs> getting filled. You know, like it, it's it's crazy. And imagine, Lave, you bring a lot of that knowledge and understanding of specialty uh, prescriptions because of the clinical decision support. Does that give you that different perspective than maybe other people? that may not understand as deeply what the prescribing process is there? Yeah, we believe a lot of our core competencies come obviously from our, our drug uh, database management solutions. And, and we see the world a little bit differently relative to those, uh, the way those prescriptions are, are, are uh, sent as therapy. Um, the, the speed to getting a, a patient on a prescription <clears throat> on, from a technical perspective really, really comes from partners you know, like what, what Vince and his organization does, as well as partners like RX Lightning that we, we offer on the other side that delivers to specialty pharmacies. You know, I think uh, back to e-prescribing as an industry, um, it, there's been a lot of success, but we're not, we have not previously been focused on how do we make things simpler for specialty pharmacies, you know, for the hub process, enrollment, um, auto enrollment, et cetera, to get them on that. So, We've, we've looked at our core competencies from a drug database perspective. We've looked at it from a network cloud perspective. And, you know, my team uh, holistically, j just with my leadership team, has over 150 years of e-prescribing specific experience in this industry. So it's been yeah. great to work with them on that. Absolutely. 
Vince, talk about the integration and how you looked at it. And you know, also maybe you can chime in on what the impact of this product is on, on, on you know, prescribers, on patients, and the experience that they're going to have. Yeah, you know, the implementation on our side is very simple, as Lisa's saying, I and mean, it's an API. You know, one of the things I'll talk a little bit about with Parker is that, you know, we're the only full stack fire compliance system on the market today. Uh, fire is the new standards, which is HL7's uh, new requirements. Uh, we follow the standard, we exceed the standards. Uh, we really create a robust solution. And part of that standard is around the new aspect of e-prescribing and how that data is being delivered. Uh, today, traditionally, e-prescribing is done. You make a click of a button and then it's off to your pharmacy. Uh, where the fire standard comes into place and it's a little bit different is about how the data is being transmitted in a secure environment and making sure that somebody has double checked that prescription being sent. And so that is where we come in with that discussion of fire standards and being able to do that. And being able to have that API functionality is very pivotal, especially when you get into specialty care and you start talking about schedules and you talk about narcotics, et cetera, uh, it becomes a little bit more obviously more important, but that integration piece is very key. And having somebody like FDB that has the experience, has the know-how, but also the educational piece to really tie into a system uh, gives you a one-stop shop, right? Why go and choose from other people if you don't need to and you can make it as, as robust as possible? Um, and the implementation from our side of, of things as well is really us being able to share a lot of backend data. So we do push data back to uh, FDB and we share some data that is uh, that is stripped of PHI and all of the fun stuff that we we think of right for protections, but it gives them some data that's there, right? What are the patients looking like? What's our populace look like? Uh, what are some of the illnesses that we're seeing pop up? And a lot of this, again, is very useful in a specialty standpoint where we're short on physicians already nationally. We can see where we can start to target certain areas and certain uh, products uh, to certain people, right? And that's really important uh, and making sure that we engage a quality outcome for our patient. Yeah, it's all about the patient. I love the focus. Uh, so Leith, uh, as we kind of wrap up here, what's next on the roadmap for the product? Yeah, I, mean, I think what, you know, we, we consider the patient, uh, you know, just like Parker Health does as being the most critical component of this. And we believe the patient goes beyond just human patients. Um, one of the things right. that we're really excited about Vila is we're the first uh, national veterinarian prescribing network. Uh, so we enable veterinarian EHRs and PIM systems to participate with Vila so we can uh, access, uh, they can access rather, you know, retail pharmacies um, so that they can make things more convenient for pet parents out there. Um, and, uh, you know, as, as we've really looked at the opportunities ahead of us, um, we're, we're very excited to be working with payers, um, you know, EHR systems like Parker and pharmacies around how we can help educate and include the consumer or the patient more. Um, we have a solution here at FDB called Meducation, which provides, you know, in, in many multiple languages, about a fourth or fifth grading reading level on why are they taking the drug, how to take that drug. And so leveraging our network and leveraging application providers, uh, you know, like Parker is really going to be important in bringing those types of solutions all together to improve the patient experience. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much, guys, for sharing these insights and perspectives. Uh, I think everyone listening is probably really happy to have another e-prescribing network option out there. Uh, I think that's a, that's a good thing for the industry. And uh, obviously, FDB comes with a lot of uh, background and, and experience in the uh, drug database space. And clinical decision support. So thanks so much for sharing about this uh, new uh, product. And uh, thanks everyone for watching and listening. If you want to find more great healthcare IT content like this, be sure to check it out at healthcareittoday.com or search for Healthcare IT Today on your favorite podcasting application. Thanks, guys. Thanks, John. Appreciate it. Good to see you. Thank you.